Hello everyone. What I want to talk about today is the idea of the global religious landscape. As we talked about last time, there are thousands of different ways that different cultures across all of human time have attempted to approach the supernatural. It would be impossible to study all of them. However, the fact that there's a lot of them and the fact that they are very diverse doesn't mean we shouldn't try to make some effort to put order onto chaos. I think it is helpful to have sort of a map of what I'm calling the religious landscape or some of the sort of major categories and types of religions out there. Um, and with this in mind, uh, a map of religious differences um, is helpful, I think, in the same way that maps, period, are helpful. So if you had never been to New York and I was to start naming, or sorry, if you had never been to North America and I was start, starting to name off like random things to you, you know, talking about, Oh, Portland's a beautiful city, Toronto's a beautiful city, Buffalo's a beautiful city with great donuts. Um, Benton, Texas, I used to live there. Um, Miami, Florida's really cool. Blah, 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 blah. If I was to say all that, you'd really have no idea what I was talking about, right? If I gave you a map like this of the entire continent and maybe identified a few key parts, such as the Florida Peninsula, um, such as the Kenai Peninsula, um, and so forth, then, you know, Yucatan Peninsula, then we're starting to get where you could start to see a little bit of structure to what I'm saying, but you'd still probably be pretty lost. If I was then to give you a map, though, with the different countries of North America divided out, as well as their, um, even the different states slash provinces within each of those, look how huge Alaska is, go Alaska. Anyways, if I was to give you a political map like that, then things would be even a little more clear. So when I would say something like, oh, Buffalo, New York, blah, 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 you'd say, oh, New York, this place over here. So having a map, a lay of the land helps. And that's what the goal of this lecture is, is to try to kind of give a lay of the land as far as religious diversity. For some of you, this will be very, very familiar. And if so, I apologize. I guess maybe watch a Netflix show while you're also listening to this lecture, do some multitasking, uh, which experts say doesn't actually work. But for some of you, at least, I hope this will be helpful and useful. And that was kind of the point of the readings this week, right? I had you do the reading by myself, which was about some of the world religions. I had you do the reading by Nasir to talk about diversity within the world religions. And then I had you do the San Simon reading, which we'll talk about why in a minute. So as far as the religious landscape, as I said before, there really are thousands of religions. Um, this is just a list I made kind of off the top of my head. I got to four and decided to just write, and the list goes on and on, and it sure does. And indeed, even with these, you have some that are written in, some of these uh, are just extremely broad, like Roman polytheism, right? Um, Neo-paganism, various, that's actually many different religions I'm combining under an umbrella term. So there really are thousands of religions. Now, having said that, the fact that there are thousands of religions doesn't mean that they're equally distributed across the global population, far from it. Uh, much like with the thousands of different languages, with the thousands of different religions, some religions definitely um, have a much, much larger population than others. So, for example, uh, the largest populations of religions, as far as the Pew Center data, which is probably some of our more reliable data on religious affiliation. Religious affiliation is not always the easiest thing to um, survey, partly because different countries are going to vary somewhat on their methodologies of how they survey their population, and partly because there's different norms in different countries. There may be countries where people identify as more than one religion at a time. And indeed, that's becoming more popular in the US. Having said that, for sake of argument, according to our best possible data, here are the numbers. The largest religion in the world is Christianity, with about 2.2 billion people. Um, if I'm not mistaken, Roman Catholicism is about half of that, close to a billion, around a billion. The next largest religion uh, would be Islam, with 1.6 billion people. Uh, many experts believe that Islam will per surpass Christianity in terms of population. Uh, within the coming century. Hinduism would be the next with 1 billion. Buddhism would be number four with 500 million or half a billion. And then Judaism um, is one of the next world religions at 14 million. So Christianity though is essentially one in three human beings. Islam is about one in four human beings. Um, Hindus would be about one in, oh, my math's not great with fractions, but I think about one in eight human beings. These are large religions, right? There are also some very large categories that you might have noticed in this chart, which aren't really religions. They're sort of just a 
screwball term for a lot of different things. For example, we've got 16.3% of the world is unaffiliated. So unaffiliated um, are, is kind of a group all term that they're using for people who do not identify as a specific religious group. That doesn't mean that in an anthropological sense, they're not religious. They may have all sorts of spiritual beliefs and supernatural practices. What this means instead is that there's not a specific sort of organized religious movement of some sort that they're identifying with. Uh, the large and rather rapidly increasing population in the United States who identify as spiritual but not religious or spiritual but not following a tradition um, would fall under this 16.3% unaffiliated. That's a pretty large percentage of the world, right? Again, about one in eight, I think that works out to. So very large percentage of the world. It would also include groups such as atheists. So you see right there that that category is incredibly diverse, right? Um, folk religionists, quote unquote, which they're counting as 6% of the population. This would include a variety of religions that we count as, anthropologists would probably be more likely to call this typically indigenous religions. So religions that are specific to uh, indigenous groups. And many of these are, not all, but most are heritage religions, by which I mean you're born into them uh, rather than sort of converting over to them. And calling them 6% is probably accurate in some ways and wildly inaccurate in others. And why I say that it's probably wildly inaccurate in others, as you probably got the sense of from your San Simone reading, uh, there are many people around the world who on paper might identify as a world religion, but in actuality are engaging in a lot of practices that draw on indigenous traditions. And it would be simplistic to call them just one of those identities. So probably that's a larger percentage than what it's actually saying. But yes, these indigenous religions are generally much smaller. Um, typically in the hundreds, thousands, maybe hundreds of thousands for some of the larger ones, but not in the billions, like some of these largest world religions. And then other religions down here, which is 0.8% or 58 million people. And there's a lot of different types of smaller religions that would uh, fall under this. If you read the key over here, you've got things like Baha'i, which some people consider to be a world religion, Jains and Sikhs, which are definitely world religions, Shinto, Tao, many different world religions, but then also groups like Tenriko, Wiccans, etc. Um, the, so that gives you a bit of a sense of sort of the patterns in terms of, yes, there's thousands, but a lot of human beings are clumped into some very specific religious traditions. Now, within those traditions, there's a lot of diversity, as we'll talk about, right? Christianity includes um, hundreds of really distinct, certainly dozens, depending on how we want to count, um, of sort of distinctive strands. Same with Islam, same really with all of these. Not only population, they're not only this, there's sort of a pattern to the population of that diversity, but there's also a geography, a geographic pattern to that diversity. And so it's not as if all those religions are evenly distributed across the globe. Although the, generally speaking, many countries are religiously diverse, even countries that we're not used to thinking of as religiously diverse. Um, nonetheless, there is definitely patterns. So in red are nations which are majority Christian. In green are nations which are majority Muslim. Uh, in tan <laughs> are populations which are majority um, Hindu. So you'll notice that Christianity clumps in the Americas, Sub-Saharan Africa, Europe, Russia, and Australia, um, and a few other places such as the Philippines. You'll notice that Buddhism uh, largely clumps in Southeast Asia, despite actually having originated more like here and definitely having strong presences all across here, and then increasingly in the US, Europe, etc. Uh, Hinduism, of course, very strong presence within India, but India is also incredibly diverse, having Christian communities that go back centuries, uh, Islamic communities that go back even longer, or very long times, very, very diverse place. Um, obviously, Buddhist, Jain, all sorts of different groups in India. Um, yeah, so this is sort of a map of the diversity. You'll notice that um, China has just like gray here. Um, part of what's going on there is that um, it's unclear how our data is not always clear in China for a lot of different reasons. Um, however, yes, so the majority of the population may not, at least according to some forms of statistics, identify as a religion. Um, and there's a variety of reasons for that including sort of the ongoing state repression of different religious groups, as well as, so yes, there are people that don't identify as religious, a large number in China, 
and that's partly a relic of sort of some of the things that have gone on under the CCP, such as the Cultural Revolution. And there are also people who may not identify as a specific religious tradition, but engage in certain types of religious practices like ancestor veneration. So China is complicated. <laughs> but anyways, that's one of the ones that's marked as unaffiliated as the majority. Uh, this is another way of sort of saying the same thing, um, but now kind of flipping it on its head and saying, for each religious group, what percentage lives in which place to what degree. So as you'll see, um, people that are unaffiliated are disproportionately in the Asia Pacific region, um, people that are from other religions, which include, again includes some somewhat large religions like Jainism and Taoism, are disproportionately in Asia Pacific. Um, Buddhists as well, Hindus, um, whereas we see groups like Judaism um, disproportionately in North America and the quote Middle East slash North Africa. Uh, Christianity has a somewhat more even spread, and so on and so forth. Um, understanding the religious landscape then. Show that we see that there are patterns in terms of population, and there are also patterns in terms of geography. And I'm going to pause the video here because nobody likes a 45 minute long video, and then I'll keep going.